Alright everybody, Revolver84 here, and the day we're going to enter the next generation Megan Trophy 2011 season, at race 1. Um, so next generation racing, I've started a season of Megan only 2011 edition trophy uh, car, uh, race cars for uh, for an ace sport. Uh, we've got some nice uh, teams set up, so the race is off. Um, so as you can see, we've got a lot of movement straight away, so... Uh, Saxo's in second place and Jester's leading the way. Saxo's looking for Jester to, to, to overtake straight away. A little, little look for Gnarly behind and Google at uh, Cuddles is pushing each other. Um, and there's a lot of movement taking place there. Cuddles is trying to fight as best he can. Gnarly Pop's right behind. Duty's making a move on Gnarly Pop. Gnarly Pop and Duty are actually um, on the same team. Uh, Gnarly Pop and Duty are on Team Bodden and Peas, and we're on board with Cuddles, he's a tango racer, uh, and he's pushing for third place. Now it looks like Saxo and Jester are in a, a sort of breaking way into a battle of their own, and Cuddles is trying to make up the ground. Uh, he's trying to make up the ground before it gets too late, before it gets settled into a rhythm, and uh, Saxo and Jester are starting to pull away. Duty has a bit of a bump here, smashes off the side, and he's got a bit of a problem. So, he's teammate. Uh, Gnarly Pop won't be too pleased with that, but Gnarly Pop's starting to have a battle of his own, actually. He's with myself, Revolver 84, and we are both pushing quite hard as we cross the bridge. Uh, Revolver 84 in the front, followed by Gnarly Pop, Gamer Ranger, Big Z, and Duty behind that. And we're on board with Revolver 84, looking back, Gnarly Pop's putting a lot of pressure on Revolver 84 here, but then um, behind him is Big Z's putting a lot of pressure on Gnarly Pop, so it's very quite, it's very close for position 4. Um, we are on board with Revolver 84 here as he goes around the corner. Takes the corner quite nice. Down down a nice long straight. Now it's getting quite packed up behind there. There's there's four or five five races there, all pushing for uh, for P4. Not a lot in it. Um Gnarly Pop's going for a move, he's trying to go for the outside, thinks about it again, goes goes on the inside, he's trying desperately to try and get past himself. Uh I'm going for the, the next corner and there might be a little bit of an incident here. So going around, Nolly Pop goes for the side, looks to try and get past. Nope, and he Loses it a little bit and goes flying away. Uh, Bigsy then takes his position and Bigsy's following up behind. Gnarly Pop is dropped back to 7th. And we are on board with... Um, is that... Bigsy? Uh, <laughs> so he pushes for... So he pushes for uh, P7. But he's pushed far too hard, but he's... And he ends up in the on the grass and then the barrier, and then smashes into the side, and that's his race over and done with. Um, don't know what happened there. Uh, we're gonna have to take another look at that, I think, because um, wh whose fault was it? There was a bit of debate amongst the racers as to what exactly happened here. There was talks of glitching and such like. It seems to me that um, Bigsy sees an opening, goes for it, but then taps the grass and goes off, flies into the side. But there's potential there that uh, because of the glitching, the Revolver 84 was looking like he was going to be too far to the left than he actually was. We're on board with Cuddles here. Cuddles is very much watching the two races up front. I think at this point Cuddles is racing his own race. He's looking for the the any opportunity to to go further forward. But it's obvious that P1 and P2 are going to be in a fight all to themselves. Chest, Jester 72 and Saxo uh, are clearly going to be uh, the guys to beat. Cuddles is just waiting for an opportunity here. Uh, Saxo looking to apply as much pressure as he can. Jester 72. He's trying his best to get round in that corner. Not quite making it there. Touching touching the the curb there. All right though. And he's made a an improvement on his sector there, he's made a record on his sector. Jester's put him a good fight, but Saxo's clearly quite a competent driver. Um, Saxo is actually one of the uh, one of the the pros in the league, so there is a number, I think it's like six amateur pros on this league, and the rest are pros. The, the league being actually 16 players long, and there's only nine players on the, on the race today. And you can see that Bigsy's dropped out at this point, obviously because of the incident with Revolver 84. He obviously felt like he didn't want to go any further and get a... He was recognised he was going to get a DNF anyway, regardless. Duty's applying a bit of pressure on Revolver 84, but it's still not over for P4. Revolver 84 is there, Duty's there, Gamer Ranger's there, um, and Gnarly Pop's there, and they're all trying to get for P4. There's a bit of contact there, Gnarly Pop goes into the barrier a little bit. Keeps a hold of it though, manages to get around the corner. And he's still fighting though, he's still fighting and he just voids getting the barrier there, just voids hitting the barrier. He does touch the grass though, and the, the cars line up to get across the bridge using each other's slipstream to try and progress as fast as possible. Now in this race, although technically, yeah, there is um, fuel consumption switched on, um, it's on real, so there isn't much concern for running out of fuel, although tire wear I believe was on. Um, Gamer Ranger there going around the corner trying to overtake and he manages to get past Revolver 84 so Revolver 84 is down to 7th. Shadow Stalker here who's uh, f playing for Voodoo Riot is very much sort of in a bit of a race of his own there at this point but he's still going in terms to finish the race. Um, we are pushing forward here at this point so P4 still for contention. 
as we go into the next sort of corner. It looks like it's going to be quite tight. Now, Voodoo Riot, because they have uh, because they have game rangers still in the game, they're still looking like they're going to try and get some points at this point. Um, pushing really hard. And but there's Revolver Revolver, uh, Revolver 84 they're looking behind, <laughs> trying to get past him. Game Ranger, but Duty and Nolly Pops having a bit of a fight with themselves. Um, which doesn't make a lot of sense because Podit and Peas is the is the their team. They are both teammates. They should be uh, sort of supporting each other quite well and uh, looking to get as much points for a team as they possibly can. But they are putting up a bit of a fight with each other. Gnarly Pop trying to go past Duty on the out on the inside there and manages because Duty went far too wide. Uh, and they are pushing together now. They should be maybe trying to complement each other a little bit here, given that the teammates and stuff have not been so aggressive because it's allowing Gamer Ranger to make up some ground on them. So now Gamer Ranger is right up behind Duty, and then behind that Revolver 84 is right behind him. Now Duty and Gnarly Pop are still racing here against each other. Five being teammates, they're they're going side by side to get down the straight. Not uh, Gamer Ranger is trying to make advantage of that using the slipstream of Gnarly Pop. And he's going for a move. He's going on the outside there to try and get round. He's swinging around, and he's getting past. He's getting past. And he's actually moved all the way up into fourth. So he's took duty and he's he's took gnarly pop because there were two busy racing between themselves and he's away. Duty's trying to make a fight for it. He's realised the maze of the mistake. Game of Ranger goes round onto the, the curb and takes a nice turn. Heading off towards the uh, the next next turn there, and gnarly pop and duty have got a bit of a game to make here, they've got a bit of a race on, they've got to get through this next S-Bend and if they've seen an opportunity to get past Gamer Ranger here, they're going to have to try and take it, maybe try and work together, slingshot one of them round as we head round towards the bridge, there's a bit of grass here by duty, but he manages to keep a hold of it, avoids the barrier just to get onto the bridge, we're back in second place with Jester 72, now this battle here has been going on for the entire race so far, three, ra three rounds in, three races in three laps in and <laughs> Chester 72 and Saxo still fighting for first place now this race is clearly going to be between those two it's going to take something pretty disastrous to upset these two they've got enough space between them and the rest of the pack of P3 well they've got, enough, they've got a gap between them and P3 for Cuddles and then Cuddles has got a gap between P3 and P4 so it's very much going to be a race between Saxo and Chester 72 at this point it's pretty obvious it's going to take one disastrous uh, incident for either of them not to win this race at this point Gamer Ranger under pressure from Duty's Duty there, still pushing for fourth place. Duty recognising that it's now probably down to him now because Gamer because Gnarly Pops fell back a little bit. Um, and it's looking like the P4 position is going to be down to Gamer Ranger or Duty. Duty's making a good effort of it. He's trying to stay in the slipstream of Gamer Ranger. Getting around as best he can. St staying tighter but not making any move. He's doing the right thing. He's playing smart. He's waiting for his moment. Um, because these obviously are, are matched cars, the 359 uh, BHP um, and the uh, V6s, you know, the, the 3.5 V6s, the Nissan V6s, everyone's on the same lovely, uh, same fighting field, you know, no one's got an advantage of the other one in terms of car performance. Um, these cars, incident incidentally, were both were all generated and built purposely for race. And there's been an argument that maybe these should be commercialised and sold to people who want to drive these cars on the road. The thing is, these cars, despite the fact that they are called Megans, they are definitely, much, definitely, definitely Renault Sport racing specific cars. Uh, I mean, everything from like the gull wings to the actual make of the uh, the bodywork and such like. Um, and that means that we're all on a level playing field. So this race here is purely coming down to just driver skill. And we're back with. Jester 72 and Saxo, they have an epic battle at this point, epic! Jester 72 is applying pressure now, but he's still not back anything, he's not acting stupid, he's still not making daft moves, he is still just staying there, staying close to Saxo's, Saxo's 9, uh, trying to push as best he can, he's, he's trying to use Slipstream, but he, again, here's, here would be a good opportunity to try and slingshot, but he's just outside the Slipstream, maybe he's just a little bit, but he's just had a best performance there for his sector, so you know he's doing a good driving, you know he's improving, oh, Despite a little bit of contact there, and he's definitely made up ground on Saxo. Saxo's maybe starting to feel the pressure a little bit, but Chester pushing himself maybe that 101% where he's tapping a bit of bit of wall there. That's been three taps of the wall in the last 10 seconds. He's really trying to push quite hard. He's not making any mistakes in terms of trying to overtake too early or or anything like that. He's just trying to keep up with Saxo and make up that ground as steadily as possible. There's still time. There's still time in this race for for Sax for, for Saxo to either make a mistake or Chester simply to to pass because we're only halfway through the race at this point. But it's very obvious that Chester is in this for the win. Chester's in this for the win. Saxo has not been any th uh, t driving a particularly bad race in terms of uh, trying to put off Chester or anything. He's, he's playing his own race. He's not swerving. He's not trying to fishtail or anything. It's, in terms of that, it's been a very good race. Um, the entire league is obviously very, very uh, sportsmanship. Uh, 
you know, and they, they want to race properly rather than bumping each other into each other and playing Mario Kart. This is very much supposed to be a sport. And I think all the, ra the races today, all nine races today, recognise that. Um, so we're back on with Gamer Ranger there and Duty. Now, Gamer Ranger's man managed to make up a little bit of space. Duty's managed to back off, but there's still, there's still P4 up for space there. There's, there's still plenty of time for P4 to be to be challenged and, and claimed. That that could be anyone. That, that could be Voodoo Riot, or it, it could be... Um, Project and P's. Now we've, we've backed off to, to, to P8 here, so this is Shadow Stalk. So Shadow Stalk is very much just driving his own race. He's just trying to finish. He's trying to get the the uh, the finishing line. You know, he's he's not really going to get P7 anytime soon. Revolver 84. There's by this point right, driving his own race as well. So Revolver 84 and S Shadow Stalk are very much just solidified in P7 and 8. They're just getting there to the end. So we're back on board with Cuddles. Cuddles is in the same sort of position. Cuddles is very much solidified P3. He's got no challenges to him, but again, he's slipped too far away from Jester and Saxo to make any sort of challenge on a, on a P2 or a P3. But it looks like he's solid for a podium finish. Just got to drive sensibly, not make any mistakes, uh, keep his, keep a level head and, and get round. That's, that's obviously his game plan at the minute. Revolver 84 has obviously recognised the fact that he's solidified in P7 and I went into the pits at this point because like I said, tie away was on. So because the gap was so significant between P6 and P7 and P7 and P8, there was that much of a time to go in and do a do a super soft tyre change. Now again, like I said, the uh, the fuel consumption was on but it was on real so there was no chance that we're going to run out of fuel anytime soon. Just to make sure I don't make any mistakes around corners to uh, to lose that P7. Saxo there, feeling the pressure of tapping the, tapping the, the side a little bit, um, but he still raced a very good race. In fact, he's, of, of the race so far, he's definitely shown that he's probably been the driver of the race, if I'm honest. Um, excellent race at this point. Um, the only non-Brit in, in the whole race, in the whole day one race. Um, so he's really flying the flag there really well for Belgium. Chester 72, though, still not letting them forget about him. Chester 72 who still, still believes that he can get uh, P1. You know, uh, and to be fair, it is. You know, there's, there's still plenty of time left. There's only five laps of eight in. Shadow Stalker there again. You know, he's very much racing his own race. He's, he's not going to lose any more positions because Bigsy's stepped out of the race now. So eighth is last position. So he can't get further back. Even though that, seeing that, he goes too far wide and smashes into the barrier there as he approaches the, the bridge there. Now that could be a case that maybe thinking he needs more tyre grip. Because there's no reason to be pushing too hard because at the end of the day he's just trying to finish the race. We're back on board now with Gamer Ranger and Duty. Gamer Ranger and Duty have been fighting this uh, this P4 fight for quite a while now, for about two laps now. And it's proven quite well. Um, Gnarly Pops obviously fell behind, so Gnarly Pops is sitting there in sixth, sort of, again, similar to P7, P8 and P3. Gnarly Pops recognise that probably it's, that's just his. But there's been a bit of an incident there. Uh, Duty's had a, bit, had a bit of a bump and he's fell back a little bit and actually Gnarly Pops overtook. But Nolly Pop now is nowhere near close enough to, to challenge for P4. So what we're looking at now is a battle for P1 and P2. P3 looks solidified as Cuddles. Oh, and then we are in the pits. Duty's went in the pits trying to get a super soft, trying to recognize... Maybe he's recognizing the fact that this, the tie away is maybe the reason for that last bump on the last the last lap there. Um, pushing maybe a bit too hard to get Gamer Ranger and just thought it was not worth it. Just solidify himself in P6. Uh, back with Jester and seven in P2. This has been an absolutely brilliant battle, truly epic between Saxo and, and Jester 72. Brilliant drive, and both drivers pushing themselves to their absolute limit. Showing respect, no, neither one of them is trying to drive each other off the road, but they are both pushing themselves as hard as they can go. Saxo maybe is driving a little bit conservative, you could argue, to try and avoid getting uh, bumps and, uh, and slides and stuff on that. Jester 72 pushing that 101%, going just a little bit beyond safe into the reckless area, just getting the odd barrier tap, uh, just to try and make up that ground, because... It, at this point, it is still anyone's race. Two laps left to go, and still still up for debate for P1 and P2. We're on board now with Revolver 84, um, and we've got a dashboard cam view. Um, so again, with this being a non-commercial vehicle, it's built specifically for uh, racing in the 2005 uh, World Series, um, you can see that there's nothing much to the dashboard, actually. It's basically just a, a IHD. IHD? <laughs> Uh, a, dis a GUI, actually a display of GUI um, with like your, your revs and your gear change and stuff like that. Nothing else to that, there's no radio obviously, uh, it's all carbon fibred inside. Um, everything from like the gull wings to the ceramic brakes, you know, this car has been built for one purpose and that is to perform in World Series racing, um, in specifically in 
a race type of a tour. Exactly like what Next Gen Racing is doing in this season. All cars in this Next Gen Racing season are all Renault Megans 2011s. Um, and we started actually on the very first, on our very first lap on race day one on the newest track, Cirque de, Cirque de Soyer Creer, the B version. <laughs> Hope I get that out. So th when we raced this, we raced this on the Wednesday. The track came live on the Monday dinner time, I believe. So although there was a P session beforehand, before the racing took place, we managed to get 15 minutes of pace session in. For some of us, that was the first time we've even drove, ever drove it, including myself. Uh, and I have to say, the track itself, brilliant. Really enjoyable. I know there's been some criticism online from uh, from some avenues of people who don't feel that the track's particularly good. Couldn't, couldn't not disagree more. Polyphony are excellent at making fantasy tracks. If You've just got to look at Dragon Trail and understand that, you know. Alsace to look at understand that. But this one in particular, I think, is a really good track. Um, it is technically demanding, but there's plenty of opportunities for overtaking. Uh, you can tap the brakes, but you haven't got to slam them unless you're in a, a higher, higher group, four, uh, group group car. This is a group 4 race. You can imagine how fast those braking would have to be if you're hitting like a group 2. The track itself is absolutely brilliant, and you've got this lovely feature, the, the bridge, um, halfway around it. Um, you know, you've got the nice vistas and stuff, helicopter flying past and stuff. Excellent, um, excellent track. I thought they were going to have in like the, um, well, I wish they got the Laguna Seca track in, if I'm honest, but, you know, it, it looked like they were going to get the, um, oh, Deep Forest track in for, for a few moments. People sort of suspected that until the screenshots came out about a month ago, that it looked like it was going to be a South of France uh, fantasy track. And, yeah, for me, no problems at all, Polyphony, you're getting a, a, an A star for track design. Absolutely brilliant. Um, layout's excellent, you know, graphics are obviously always awesome. No, no debate on the graphics, but the complexity of the tracks, excellent. The technicality of the tracks, excellent. The the items and, and thought and detail into the track and the surrounds, you know, the, the placing of the uh, spectators, the placing of the stands, the placing of the signs, all that seems very appropriate, natural, um, an excellent track in my eyes. So we're here on board with Chester 72. Now he is dropped a little bit back from Saxo now. Now it's not that he hasn't pushed himself too hard, I just think Saxo has just pulled away a little bit more. Um, by this point, Jester 72, because he hasn't been in the pits yet, his tyres are probably suffering, you know, he's tapped the grass a few too many times. And with the latest update that came out on Monday, when you go across grass, when you go across gravel, you do lose a bit more traction, you do lose a bit more grip. Uh, for a period of time while the dust comes off your off your wheels, which I thought was a brilliant, brilliant addition to the uh, to the game, if I'm honest. Um, it really brings another level of realism. There really is a, a, a risk when you push your car now to go around bends and such like that. If you hit the uh, hit beyond the road into like a gravel or a grass, um, there isn't that just momentary loss of time as you're hitting that area as well. There is a resultant loss of time post that. There's a, for for a period of maybe two three seconds, you don't have as much grip, um, which I just think is a brilliant addition. It really shows that Yama, Yama, Yamaguchi, Kazumori Yamaguchi, is a uh, really a massive uh, enthusiast of simulation racing and wants to try and put this one on the map um, in terms of the sport. Um, yeah, in terms of the update overall, I haven't actually gotten the the new F1 car, but I really wanted. I'm saving up t for me two mil to get it. Um, I really want it quite badly, if I'm honest. Uh, I do like the F1 racing. Well, there's been an incident. Cuddles has had a bit of an incident. Let's have another look. Let's rewind and have another look. Cuddle goes round and he's looking for the bridge, and he goes bang straight into the barrier. There, totally misses that. Goes far too wide. Again, the, another driver that has not been in the pits, and he's probably suffering from now. His tyres are probably on 70% grip now at this point, and because of that, Game Ranger is completely took advantage of that and flew into third place. Uh, Cuddles must be absolutely gutted at this point because he's held P3 for what since half fifth round lap one we are on the final lap of lap eight he must be absolutely devastated but it will still be a good result for tango racing to be fair you've got one finishing in fourth you've got one finishing in seventh uh, that's probably a good result for tango racing um just a bit of a disappointment there for cuddles i do feel from a little bit um because he was very much play playing his own race for a long time there and just that moment of concentration there that that little minuscule percentage of uh, lack of traction compared to maybe what he was expect and that's all that it took to go into the barrier for Gamer Ranger to take advantage of that. So that now means that Voodoo Wright is in a really s respectable position in terms that they're going to have a P3 
Um, so they will get some points. Obviously, there's there's the unfortunate Shadow Stalker in, in, in P8 there, so he's not probably not going to get much. But at least they have progressed through the board. Um, and we are over with Saxo as he crosses the line to take the win. Not only does he take the win, but he also gets the fastest lap. Um, excellent race by Saxo, has to be said. Absolutely fantastic driver. Jester 72, fantastic as well. Um, a truly brilliant race by all drivers. Um, a few incidents which were very entertaining, if nothing else. Um, but overall, an excellent display of really competent driving. Very well respectful. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. All the best. Ta-da.